Hello my lords and welcome to the Beyond Sana's channel, my name is Shanks and today we're gonna continue in the evil campaign for the Shadow and Flame mods for Battle for Middle-earth 1. With the Isengard army, Lourdes and Ugluk with 60 Uruks and 40 Dun landings. We are going to target the gap of Rohan for 25 more command points. Let's do that. And I believe the next mission is gonna be Helm's Deep. I'm excited about this one. The gap of Rohan is all that lies between the armies of Isengard and the fortress of Helm's Deep. Yeah, you already heard Saruman. It's gonna lead us to the fortress of Helm's Shadow Deep. Falls across Rohan. Man shall see no dark. I know. So the problem is with these units, guys, with these uh, berserkers, and that they are also able to kill our own units, and for that reason we need to separate them from the main army. And let's be grouped and let's build some furnaces first of all to get the money we need, right? Let's lead them forward. I don't know where the castle is. It's a pretty big map. Oh. Okay. Hold on a second. Alright, so we can kill these units, by the way. It is an outpost, but we don't have the money just yet. Because we are leaving the main castle, it's very important to build some towers just to feel a bit more safe. You know, feeling uh, better feeling safe than sorry. Oh, there are some Rohirrim. But our units are going to be able to handle them. Not a big deal. Oh, he was very fast with this money on the ground. These units are like glass cannons. Oh, there is... Hold on a second. Oh, please. Is this going to be enough to break the wall? Would be awesome if we can do it. Oh, yeah. Actually, they are dealing a lot of damage. I mean, not as much as an explosive mine, of course. Explosive mine is able to one-shot that all alone. But uh, explosive mine can't be exploding by its by its own, you know? You need to have, like, a fireball from Saruman or Berserkers with the torches or fire arrow upgraded units. Let's fight for the map control a bit. We have still a couple of command points available, and we need to make sure to fill that eventually with some um, ballistas, because, again... We are lacking of damage against buildings with this army. Since this is only for a short duration, and once this flaming arrow volley is on cooldown, our units are not gonna deal any more damage to the buildings. So we have a full base, that's great. Unfortunately, we have no settlements outside just yet, but we will be grabbing this one. And that's like a perfect proof. Look how long it takes to destroy a single farm outside. So the damage output against buildings is really questionable. But I like that. I really did. I was thinking about that also last night. Because, um, you know, normally in BFME 1 you could make only one unit and this unit would be good against anything. And those units were the combo battalions. Because they were great against horses, against other units, against heroes, against flyers, against ballistas, against anything pretty much. Now they are not good against buildings anymore. Which kind of forces you to recruit some different kind of units if you want to make sure to win the game. And I like that. So let's build full towers. We have also a lumber mill coming up now. We can also potentially grab this outpost. Um, because I don't want to touch these furnaces in the... I mean, the design is actually next level. I like the design. I'm always surprised how much is still possible in a really old video game like Battle for Middle Earth 1. From 2003. That's amazing. So we need to build the tower. Uh, still no work pit, unfortunately. But it's okay. And we will also want to go for the Siege Warriors. I don't want to go for any more units because, you know, the units, they cost... Oh, look at this army, dude. That's crazy army. We might uh, be forced to use the War Chant, but it's okay for now. We are targeting our hero, who is all about to hit level 3. That's going to unlock the Orcish Medicine, which is pretty similar to the Atelas from Aragorn. But it's even better than that, because it doesn't only heal the nearby heroes, but also heals the nearby Urukai, which is very, very nice. So, let's build another tower here, and then we need to build the Siege Warwick. Siege Warwick is way, way cheaper than it's, you know, normally. Okay, we need to take the fights, and for that reason, we need to use the War Chant. And Eye of Sauron, that's a huge army we are clashing with now. I want to I zoom in. I want to show you also, guys, the Lourdes. Look at this guy. Crazy graphics, am I right? Let me know in the comment section down below what do you think about this graphics. And also, please let me know if you have tried to play this campaign yourself yet in the Shadow and Flame mod. I'm truly impressed so far from what I've seen. I was expecting the campaign to be pretty much the same thing, but that's definitely not the case. 
weapon. It's way better. Keep your weapon okay. Better. So what is the goal? Destroy all good forces. Uh, destroy the refugee camps and build four lamer I mean, the bonuses are not very, very important, but we can still try to, you know, achieve them. Simply, why not? We need to wait for the ballistas anyway. Because when it comes to enter the enemy base, I, for myself, I like to open more than one spot only. So ideally, you want to break at least two or even three parts of the wall before you enter. This way, your units are not going to be stuck in between. Because look at this tiny spot, you know? They are going to be stuck and that's going to make them kind of buggy, if you know what I'm saying. Let's kill these units first. Oh, we lost this mill, but it's okay. We have ballistas now for the protection. And the ballistas are being protected by these two towers, even though... The damage output from the towers is not the best. Okay, Rohirrim are coming now, but it's okay. They're gonna tank to Ugluk. I wanna see this mid uh, Orcus medicine now. Oh, it's it sounds like the war chant, by the way, if you use it. But it's able to heal up the allied, allied units. Level 4 loot, level 5 is gonna unlock the leadership. And when you play this campaign, the good thing, and what I like personally the most, is you have options, you know? Uh, some missions are of course set in stone like Helm's Deep or something like that But other than that you can choose with which army you want to fight If you want to fight with Uglug or Lourdes, it's fine You can also fight with uh, Sharku and Wolfgar or with Saruman and uh, Grima So, you know, long story short, you have way more, you, you know, heroes on the field uh, Or available for Isengard And we're gonna see also the heroes later on once Rohan is defeated Once we claim the Helm's Deep and we will switch to Mordor faction, of course. And I want to see also the changes they implemented into the Mordor faction. Uh, for the campaign, at least, you know. So let's build a slaughterhouse instead. Let's move on with the Valistas. And we can start sieging a little bit more. And in the meantime, we can keep killing those units. Not a big deal. We have a huge army, very strong army. With uh, leadership from this guy. That's a really significant leadership. And I also like the fact that we have now different types of leaderships. You know, also movement speed leadership passively is nice. Especially for a quite mobile and infantry heavy faction like Isengard. Remember, Isengard is the strongest infantry army in the game. And also the fastest. And that's gonna be even next level now with Ugluk and his, you know, passive movement speed from the hand of the Hunt for the Ring leadership. Lourdes has also leadership, of course. Captain of Orfang, uh, damage and armor once he's level 5. And you have also the fighting Urukai, call forth the scouts of Isengard. And thick armor, Lourdes permanently gains 75 armor. So the heroes, as you can see and tell, they are, you know, much better now. So let's break and let's make this Rohan base look at, like an Isengard base, just why not. And unfortunately, once again, we are not able to recruit any Warp Riders just yet. The Warp Pit doesn't even exist. We can't uh, build that. I, I will show you guys which um, buildings are available right now. Slaughterhouse, Furnace, Uruk Pit, Dun Landing, Longhouse, Tower, Armory, and then the Siege Warp. So we are definitely missing the Warp Pit. And potentially it's going to be available in the next missions. But even with Warp Riders, I would still go with the, uh, you know... Normal units because I, that's why why I, what I like about Isengard. I'm a guy when I'm playing Ro Rohan, I want to get those mobile units on the field like Rohirrim, Rohirrim Archer. With Gonza, I want to get Gandalf on the field, and then Rangers. And with with Isengard, it's the combo battalion with Mordor, trolls, movement kills to make it as uh, movie like as it's possible as it can be possible as it can be possible be you know. Uh, and I'm not happy about the situation that this Rohirrim archers are outrage, outraging or outranging, not raging, our uh, towers. That's not the best thing in the world. And look at this base in the meantime. So, you know, we need to peel back with this one army, level 3. Let's try to not lose them. We also, hey, hey, hey. Don't let them kill the ballistas for free. We also have to peel back with the other combat battalion because this Rohirrim archer battalions, they're gonna slowly but surely take down the entire base very soon. I'm happy that their damage output is not the best. Okay, let's group them like that. Nice. If only one Balista left. Okay, Lourdes, you go, you go here. And, uh, you know, we can get some more Balistas. Explosive Mine doesn't exist, but I'm assuming it's gonna be available. And you can't also recruit more than... F you see, you are limited. Be earlier you could just click until 20, you know? That's not possible anymore. So, we can get even some more units on the field, potentially. The Ballista keeps shooting. Working on his way. 
to turn a Rohan base into a Mora base. This units are recovering. We can demolish this too and build two Uruk pits instead. I mean, the design is next level. Even from the Siege Warriors, they really reworked literally everything. Okay, let's go here and use the Orkish Medicine once again. But it's not healing up those units though. Uh, of course not, these are uh, done landings, that's why. This is exclusive for the Urukai. Okay, that makes sense, I forgot about that for a second guys, sorry. Okay. Okay, we are, we are also able to save this, that's great. More crossbowmen and Urukai at the same time, hopefully we can afford it. Come on, point wise, because they cost always 30 each. So, 60. We are at 254, 57 even. It's gonna be hard to get both the battalions on the field, but it's okay. Okay, so peel back. There is no reason. Reinforcements from Saruman summons two hordes of Uruks. That's nice. And then last but not least, Headhunter. It's gonna be his final ability. Ugluk and nearby Uruks temporarily gain 100% more damage. I mean, Ugluk is a really sportive hero exclusively for the Urukai. And I like that. So I'm gonna show you guys what happens if you use the fire now. Let's use fire. Pew, 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 pew. The Rohan garrison is gonna be taken down quite fast. We will definitely need some more ballistas, but there they are. Okay, we have one more. Oh, now I need to demolish one of this. And build the ar armory here. You want to make sure that every single unit of yours is upgraded. Very important. Because you are, uh, you know, kind of carrying those units from mission to mission, you know? So the upgrades you buy now are gonna be available also in the next mission. So you don't need to buy upgrades every single time you play with them. Then you did when you do it, you know, once. Okay. So break it, break it, break it. I'm actually curious if he has more than one castle only. Armory is up on the field. We can skip this for now and get it last. Money is not a problem as you can see and tell. We have not even used devastation just yet. Palantir. Ah, we can actually spam Palantir. Yeah, that's. Actually, not bad. Okay, we see pharmacy at the bottom right side, but nothing too crazy. We have no summons just yet. Uh, but I believe we will get some summons, yeah? No? No, actually, we have no summons. We have only the Balrog summon. Yeah, the summons are existing, though, in the Shadow, uh, in the Legends of the Third Age mod from Palando. Um, okay, so Banner is available. That's nice. Steel Bolts coming up next, and then Heavy Armor last. Have no chance against us. <laughs> I'm just making, uh, you know. <laughs> look at this base from Ro. <laughs> it's so funny. We broke every single wall, literally. Okay. Steel bolts. That's nice. Ugluk is healthy once again. And Lures can also. Looks like meets back on the menu, boys. Exactly. I like this. I like this mod a lot. Please let me know in the comment section down below which mod you would like me to play next. Um, I don't even know if there are much more mods available for Battle for Middle Earth 1. But if, if there is, maybe, I don't know. And you can let me know, guys. Please, I would really appreciate that. Okay, Forge Blades and Heavy Armor Purchase too. That's nice. That's great. Okay. So... Slowly but surely, slowly but surely. Break the wall too, nice. You guys can also do something maybe. I cannot wait to march on the we can guard this area, that means... Oh, Orkish Medicine and back to full health, just like that. I like the sound when he's using that, it sounds like the war chant. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now please, uh, I mean, it's like 50 person Isengard base now. Use currency. Look the picture from Lourdes and Ugluk. Do it. Just do it. Pew, 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 pew. The Ballistas, in my opinion, are the worst siege weapons in the game. Like, uh, even ends are better. Followed up by the Mordor Catapults and of course the number one, uh, for me at least, are the Gondo Trebuchets. But, uh, in normal VFME, the Drama Trolls from Mordor are also able to buff the damage from the Catapults and that's gonna make them even stronger than the Gondo Trebuchets. And keep in mind that Mordor Catapults are always coming with fire, while you have to purchase the Firestone upgrade with the Gondo faction from the Siege Warwick. So that's like a 1-0 score for Mordor only because of that reason. Okay, the base has been taken down. And that's it. 
GG well played. Once more, Sauron's warriors stand triumphant. Victorious, ladies and gentlemen. I like this screen so much. And let's actually take a look if the next campaign is uh, the Helm's Deep. I'm curious. I want to see that real quick. We have now in total 325 command points available. The King of Rohan has fled Edoras. Attack a Rohan region. Okay, not yet. Not yet. I believe also we need to attack Edoras first before. Oh, but the, you see? The Isengard army is moving. Uh, oh, they are actually preparing for the battle. That's uh, the Alvin army now sporting uh, Helm's Deep. Yeah. Oh, Edoras is going to be the next one. That's going to be in the next video, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed your stay. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. Likes are helping quite a lot. Subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. And as always, stay beyond standards and keep hitting like a truck. Peace.